Hey y'all, Boogie Knight here, how's it going? And if you know me well enough by now, you know I love me some really good, awesomely bad movies. You know the type I'm talking about, the, the type that they're taking themselves seriously, most of which, there are some that don't, and you can't tell whether you should be laughing or not, you're gonna do it anyway. You feel ashamed about buying it or even getting a ticket to seeing it in the theaters, but it doesn't matter because it's really tickled your fancy and you're gonna do it regardless. I'm gonna give you some examples of some of my favorites. First of all, ho ho, Krampus, a horror comedy about the Christmas devil. And if you haven't seen it by now, you really should because it is hilarious. Let's go into another holiday film, Silent Night, Deadly Night, parts one and two. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my review of Silent Night, Deadly Night, part two, because I can sum it up in two words, garbage day. You want non-holiday? Check this out. Boom, boom. Sergeant Kabuki Man NYPD. The title should tell you something right then and there. Um, Long-time viewers should know my uh, love with the Godfrey Home movies. So check this out. What just arrived in the mail today. Oh, yo! Ninja Terminator. Can't wait to watch it. And, of course, the creme de la creme of awesomely bad movies. I bring to you right here, Zardoz. I mean... Come on, Sean Connery and a weird freaky s &M diaper and the tagline, the gun is good, the penis is evil. That ought to tell you something right there about the awesomely bad movies that I think are hilarious and I can't get enough of. So I'm always on the hunt for a good awesomely bad movie. You know what I'm talking about, that you go to the store at the end of the day, you had a long day, you don't want to cook anything, but you don't want to feel greasy, so you check out the quick uh, access over in the deli section, and there's that one thing of fried chicken that just the grease is clinging to it, it looks disgusting, you know it's going to make your life a living hell the next day, but damn it, you want it anyway with an ice cold beer, because that's what you're thinking of. Well... Unfortunately for me, the movie that I saw a couple of weeks ago, that I should have posted two weeks ago on opening day, didn't fit that category. It just made my life a living hell, and not for the old good reasons. It did not make my day enjoyable the day before. And I'm talking about one movie, and one movie alone. The Bye Bye Man. Oh my god, this movie... I have seen good horror movies, I have seen awesomely bad horror movies, and I have just seen lousy horror movies. This movie definitely fits the lousy category. I mean, just think of it as the title by itself, The Bye Bye Man. I mean, what do you get when you think of that? Is it the fraternal twin for the hello hello woman? I, I don't know. It's stupid. I mean, the director could have come up with a better name by itself. I mean... You take this movie, it's basically like um, a bad Slenderman knockoff, uh, Blair Witch Project 2, not even the good one, we're talking about the Book of Shadows, and throw in a bunch of other cliches like Inception um, and The Cell. It's, it's a slew of just bad movies by itself. The only redeeming quality would be, it's like I said, reminiscent of the Slenderman, but you should know my obsession with the Slenderman myth to begin with. Um, I knew what I was getting myself into when the theater down by my place was giving away free tickets on opening night to go see this. Yeah, they are apparently so desperate to fill seats that they're giving away freebies. <sighs> I, I, sh I should have listened to everything in my body to say, walk away, walk away, it's not worth it, but I did. And it was funny because I was talking to Harkov about it, I guess, a couple weeks ago. And he's like, well, who directed it? I'm like, well, the name's Stacy Title. And he goes, well, is that the new Alan Smithy? <laughs> that still makes me laugh because uh, for those of you who don't know the alias of Alan Smithy, Alan Smithy is usually an anonymous name of a title given to a director who really wants to ditch a project but are so far along in it they really don't. So they give themselves the anonymous name and just hope to God they can just kind of squeak past the radar without too much ridicule. Nope. Stacy Title. Oh yeah, she really just decided to go out on a limb and make this stupid horror movie for herself. And if you're unfamiliar with Stacy Title and her works, she and her husband did a movie a couple of years ago. I forget the title, but it has something to do with a haunting in the ghetto of California. 
yeah, I can't take that one seriously because it actually is supposed to be taken seriously. It's not a horror comedy, once again, like any of the other stuff that I've done. But what you need to know about the By My Man is that it just goes into every single trope in the horror genre that you can possibly dig up. This movie is the ballistics X versus Sever of the horror genre. I never thought I would say that out loud. Um, uh, spoilers in a nutshell about the Bye Bye Man, and I know there's a couple people, Alan, that really want to see this movie, um, but if you've seen the trailer, there is everything you need to know about this movie. The Bye Bye Man is a myth that if you say the name The Bye Bye Man, he will futz with your thoughts until basically you go insane and kill everybody. And the only way to beat the Bye Bye Man is to kill everybody who has actually said the name The Bye Bye Man. Which pretty much seems counterproductive because if you kill everybody that's said the name The Bye Bye Man, um, doesn't he win? Yeah, that was never explained to me. But, so to counteract all this, there is the phrase, don't say it, don't think it, don't think it, don't say it. Has nobody seen the movie Inception before? If you haven't, let me give you a crash course on this. There is a scene in the beginning of Inception where they talk about planting a thought in somebody's head where it's like, well, here's a thought for you. Don't think about elephants. What are you thinking about? Elephants. Well, there you go. You planted the thought in somebody else's head. If you're saying don't say it, don't think it, don't think it, don't say it, what are you going to do by a knee-jerk reaction? You're going to say the bye-bye man. You're going to think about the bye-bye man. There is no firewall in a person's head to ignore that. And this just throws it in your face right out of the get-go. It doesn't give you any build-up. It's not even like the American remake of um, The Ring. At least with that, there was pacing. This just basically took a bunch of tropes from every horror movie, bad horror movie, I might add, and just, pfft, just threw it in a blender, put it on frappe, poured it into a glass and said, don't drink it, don't drink it, don't drink it. What are you going to do? You're going to drink it. I mean, not even Carrie Ann Moss, who played the ongoing detective, and I love Carrie Ann Moss. I think she's a fantastic actress. Couldn't even save this movie. I mean, if they tweaked a couple of things and had Carrie Ann Moss as kind of the um, kind of the main character of it, kind of almost like the detective in the video game Luchas, it would have worked. But no, you have a bunch, you have three or four college mooks that move into a house off campus, find the words "bye bye man" carved into a nightstand, and for whatever the reason. They obsess over it until they start doing research over it and find out about the slew of grisly mur murders, murders, God, I am tired, dating back to the 1960s. And once again, they become obsessed with it. And this whole don't say it, don't think it, don't think it, don't say it becomes kind of their central motif. That's all you need to know about this movie. They, want, God, I mean, they, it's so asinine just how far out of their heads they will go to just not say this phrase but when they do once again like inception and like other horror movies like even going even going back to fallen of all things where the bye bye man will so much as touch you god i'm a sense like i'm talking about incarnate um they will start hallucinating they will start freaking out they will basically start tripping to the point that they start you know just going crazy, like I keep saying. And the only way is to kill everybody. <sighs> Stacy Tuttle did not think this movie through. I mean, if you've seen the trailer for this movie, you've seen everything there is to need to know about this. It's not worth going to. The grossest scene in the movie... Actually, no, let me go back a step further. Uh, beforehand. This movie is a PG-13 rated horror movie. There is more gore in the 1990s remake of The Phantom. And there was next to no gore in that. The most gore, I guess you could say in this, is... I couldn't tell. It was almost like there's a scene where some, a person gets shot. And I can't tell if it's a crack in the wall or black blood. It looks like the bottom of my coffee mug if it's been sitting out for a couple days. 
It just, it didn't fit the horror genre at all. I mean, yes, PG-13, I get it. You have to restrict certain things. But this wasn't even horrific. This was just like, wait for it. Three, two, one. <laughs> But the way the audience was going was kind of like almost that they took David Koresh from the Branch Davidians and had him start recruiting people to kill people within the theater. Ugh! If you're going to see a horror movie, don't do something where the trailers pretty much portray everything ahead of you. Give them something to think about. The whole concept of this movie was people say the bye-bye man and they start losing their minds over this and they start doing research to try and prevent it from happening. So what does it do? It makes it worse. <sighs> Give me something to think about. Give me something to hold on to. I mean, my God. Underworld had more suspense and more gore than this. And I don't even like Len Wiseman as a director. If you're going to see this movie, just wait till it's red boxed actually no don't even red box it don't put money in Stacy title's pocket just download it whether you do it legally or illegally download it on amazon video for like two or three dollars this movie is not worth it i can't call it a horror movie last airbender was scarier than this signs was creeper than this the village was creepier than this I know, I'm quoting a lot of Shyamalan movies, but let's face it, that's that's kind of like the bar standard for bad horror movies going back to, like, the 2000s. If you're going to see a horror movie that's suspenseful, oh my god, just look for anything better than this. If you want a gore fest, um, go, go see Hellraiser. If you want a suspense movie, see The Sixth Sense, or better yet, go see Split, the newest Shyamalan movie, which was fantastic, by the way, and he did a damn good job. Um, I know I'm not giving away too much in this talking about the Bye Bye Man, but there is honestly nothing to talk about. You say the name, you go crazy. You try to go crazy, you try to fix it. I mean, this is, there's, there's nothing to it. It's paper thin, the characters are as static as they come. I was having issues with my phone earlier today, and I was getting better reception on my phone than I was watching this movie. So, I'm sorry if this review was next to nothing and pretty slim, but I couldn't even call this a horror movie. I would call this a schlocky, over-the-top budget George Costanza move of a movie with a lot of stupid sound effects, a lot of stupid visual effects, and a plot that goes nowhere. I believe when Yahtzee was doing his review of the video game Dead Space and saying there's a weird creepy creature right across the hall that you can see in plain view walking slowly towards you and then smacking you in the face with a T-bone steak, that is the bye-bye man. There are scenes where you see this creature in broad daylight or in a full light standing in the background that you can see and going, wait, what? The creature in Jeepers Creepers was creepier than this movie and he looked like Gene Simmons with a hangover. Stacy, read a couple of books on horror movies before you decide to record. Read Naked and the Undead. Read Dance Macabre. They can give you the idiot's guide on how to do a horror movie, from pacing to actual horrific elements. I'm sitting there going, wow, I wish I was drunk. And if you're watching a horror movie wishing you had been drinking, there's problems. I mean, it, not even James Wan could have saved this movie. That's how bad it was. But that's my take on it. It's not an awesomely bad movie, it's just a bad movie. I mean, what else is there to say about it? I mean, I keep saying this, and I've said this several times already, but if you've seen the trailers, that's all you need to know. Go to Wikipedia. Look it up. It's, it definitely constitutes the bad movie dump of flicks, because it was just... <laughs> whatever. I'm not going to waste another breath on that. I've had a long day. i got an even longer day ahead of me tomorrow. I've got a busy weekend, and i got a couple of really good movies, and I'm hoping we'll save this. But in the meantime, y'all have a wonderful evening, and I'll catch you on the flip side, all right? Peace.